Charlie Dimmock, Boys. the Rich Brothers, Jump. <laughs> and the Garden Rescue Team have a treat in store. Too much entertainment. They have come to the rescue of hundreds of British gardens. Now it's time to look back hey. and pick their favourites. This looks really cool. Oh, wow. 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 Look at that. <laughs> Fabulous. As they celebrate the very best. I don't like it. Huh? I love it. Oh. From extraordinary eco gardens. Thank you so much. <laughs> to exotic designs. Oh my gosh, no way. Gardens inspired by people. Is this the garden that you dreamed of? It is. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's a thumbs up. And places. It's the most beautiful garden I've ever been in. Therapeutic spaces. Wow. And the most extraordinary transformations. Whoa. It is perfect. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> right. Welcome, Welcome to, to Garden Rescue. Rescue. Top of the plots. <laughs> Right, Chaz, what are we talking about today? Today is all about those exotic gardens we've done where we've put a, a spin on it. So we've gone from Malaysia to Zambia, India via Watford. <laughs> <laughs> broad section. A big broad yeah. section. Yeah. Almost those gardens that make you feel like you're on holiday. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember Mike and Lizzie in Bourne? Yeah. yeah. Bit of a Caribbean theme. Ah, he yes. was from the Caribbean, so they wanted that vibe in the garden. Every garden rescue is something to be proud of, but our first exotic Top of the Plots transformation was to bring a taste of the Caribbean to Mike and Lizzie's rather bland garden. Hello. Hi. Hi. The Rich Brothers design introduced tropical flavours with a new seating area, lush planting and an inventive use of some old barrels. For us, it's all about that outdoor lifestyle. Eating, dining, barbecuing, drinking. There's a lot to do, and the team's first job is to get rid of all the old hard landscaping. Well, everybody gets decking down, but one thing first, better meet my brothers before I start dismantling. <laughs> and before long, the cement's been mixed and the contemporary style flagstones can go down. With the old wooden deck ditched, Lee's making a start on the fixed seating. I'm just laying, laying these down on the side, just to get a bit more stability. And then I'm going to run two cores on top of this, upright, and get some render on them. That's the plan. The couple already have some exotic plants in their garden, including some cordelines and Charlie's first job is to tame them. These are cordeline australis, and people used to think that they weren't very hardy at all, but these green ones are actually very robust and will do quite happily outside. You don't need to protect them at all. The common name for them is Torbay Palms uh, because they were used down on the seafront in Torquay, and if you go down to Torquay, you'll see they're huge and they look just like palm trees. So if you really want to go for a tropical jungle effect, cordelines are ideal. Well, they are gorgeous, aren't they? And they're going to add a lot to this garden, but they can tend to get a little bit mental. Well, they're sort of a bit blobby at the moment. Yeah. I mean, lovely sort of fronds of foliage, but see, there's really gorgeous trunks to them. So lovely. if we can expose that a bit, it will yeah. really pick up that tropical yeah, yeah. sort of theme. And what I thought is if I save these up into bunches, you see, I can make you a nice grass skirt. Oh, please. For your rumba. Oh, my rumba. My rumba. Hopefully there's enough. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have plenty. As the exotic transformation marches on, Lee's finished the blockwork seating, and now he and Andy add a one-coat render, whilst Charlie makes that grass skirt for Harry. Right then, sir. 
Look at that. <laughs> My dream did come true. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me that the, the, um, the style is long this season. The style is long. <laughs> You've even plaited the end there. I have. Do you want to cable tie that onto him? And then cable that's... tie? <laughs> that means it doesn't come off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Is that my day ended now, is it? Yeah, there you go. Well, ended, just started, that. mate. Just begun. Bye. All you need now is a coconut and a straw to drink out of. Da 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 Another piece here, look, bonus. With Charlie getting into the spirit, she's had an idea which will give the garage a Caribbean twist. Sheets of corrugated iron are easy to pick up at reclamation yards nationwide. Lee screws uprights to the garage wall. And then it's ready for the corrugated iron. Right, first bit going in. Bit of brute force and ignorance is required. You'd be and brute force. It's very satisfying. <laughs> David and Harry, David and Harry. The brothers' design also features an inventive way of recycling some brightly painted barrels. You look at them and you initially think oil containers, but nay, they had a different and more exciting part, so they actually were used to contain fruit juices. Probably colour coordinated, nice and tropical flavours. Um, so what we're going to do is put some herbs in, put a few plants out here. Great position that they can walk straight out of the kitchen, pick a few herbs, put them in their drinks, or take them back into the kitchen. And because they were only used to transport fruit juices, it means that they've got no nasty chemicals in them. So they're free to plant up with edibles, but what we're going to do now is fill them. On the other side of the garden, Charlie makes a start on painting the framework of her corrugated iron creation. So add it with our nice rusty tin and just to smarten it up I'm going to paint the timber black and that should sort of bring it all together as one. Now if it were me I would have painted this really bright colours but the boys want it tasteful. They only do tasteful. I do tacky and bright. The boys have now filled their barrels with pebbles and soil, and Charlie's got some plants. Da, da, da. Oh, have some mint and coriander. Lovely. What do you think? What do you think of me rustic I posh lo I caribbean that. posh? I made it posh just for you boys because <laughs> you didn't want it too real. No, I love it. I think it's brilliant. It's very elegant. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. You lose it now, but not in a bad way. In a way that it feels fitting with the yeah. garden. I'd nice. stop talking now yeah. if I were you. <laughs> Done. Right. What's the next thing then? Let's get some stuff in here. Planting herbs outside your back door is great for cooking, but they also discourage flies because they hate the smell. We kept it really simple by just planting up some mint and some coriander. And the mints can be great in drinks and cocktails, and the coriander's can go great in salads and maybe on the barbecue. With the garden nearly finished, the team crack on with the rest of the Caribbean-inspired exotic planting. Around the back of the seating area, got these gorgeous Miscanthus sinensis. I've got these lovely purple seed heads that sort of just waft over the seating area. And then it's picked up with this sort of prairie planting with Rebecca's and Crocosmias. So this will just be a sea of grasses and hot yellows and reds. So it'll look fabulous next year. With some turf laid and the last plants added, the garden is finished. It was an unloved, rough old space that's been transformed into a Caribbean tropical treat. But will Mike and Lizzie think it's an exotic paradise? Whoa! Wow! Oh, my gosh! No way! Completely changed. Oh, my gosh! That's awesome. That reminds me of the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> Too. I think this Caribbean vibe's gone straight to you. 
cool. This mocktail has, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's in this stuff? Underneath this exotic cordial line. I know. Definitely a lovely spot. Yeah, is really this is. one mine, is it? Oh, yeah, that one's yours oh, there. Thanks. The umbrella's a bit damp for yeah, some reason. Yeah, it's obviously <laughs> been for a swim. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, from the Caribbean to the Far East, do you remember that Malaysian-inspired garden we did in Bitten? Oh, yes. For Lewis and Amanda? I think we'll raise a glass to that. Yeah. Yes, that was a project, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Lewis and Amanda's garden left a lot to be desired, and it was far from exotic. But Charlie's winning design was set to change that, with a screened patio and a centrepiece moon gate, which is a traditional feature of Oriental gardens. Now, going with your slightly oriental feel to it, this is a, a gravel area of white and grey with lights sunk in to the gravel. So it's very zen, so you can sit in your patio area and just relax. The landscaping team crack on. Andy starts by lifting the existing patio so it can merge with the new patio stone. While Lee makes a start on the moon gate, which will be made from weatherproof plywood. So I've marked my centre point here. I've just put a screw in there. I've got my string line now all, all wired up with a pencil on. Just a matter of marking it out. And uh, hopefully it'll be in the right place. So we'll give it a go. The area for Charlie's new patio is cleared. The hardcore is down, and now Andy can start to erect the uprights for Lewis and Amanda's new screens. About bang on. The skeleton of Charlie's design is coming along nicely. Ooh, look at this, it's lovely. Looking smart, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. It's made this seating area much bigger, hasn't yeah, it? Has. It's, it's all a bit bunched <laughs> up here, wasn't it, really? So uh, this is the old paving that Lewis put down. He did a fantastic job of it. And to marry the two up, we're going to put planting through. So it's a good way of joining the opposite sort of styles together. And then we have the moon gate. So the reason they chose my garden was all about the moon gate. So it's got to look good, it's got to look right. Lee's been doing an amazing job constructing the moon gate. It's looking gorgeous. So basically, all he's done is he's got these four upright posts and then he's sandwiched them with this ply board. And the reason it looks so good is because he's actually screwed it from inside and glued it so you can see no screw heads. So it's got a really seamless, clean finish. So really beautiful bit of construction, but the worry now is getting it into place and making sure it fits in the holes that have been dug. Right then, everyone, I think we need a little bit of more muscle on the moon gate, please. Why is that? Let's get it in place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be heavy. Oh. Right on. Yeah, good hike, guys. Good nice work. With all the muscle in the garden joining forces, the moon gate is coaxed into position. The structure is temporarily propped in place while the team secure it with quick drying concrete and leave it to set. easier than I thought, I have to say. Yeah, not too bad, was it? Well, no, it looks fantastic. So Lee's sort of doing the fiddly finishing touch. He's putting this piece of timber ply on the inside to finish it off and make it look really smooth. So this is the moon gate. What's the moon gate? Well, you can see now, it's basically a wall with a big circular hole in it. Now, traditionally, they would have been made out of a stone, but this ply, it's not indoor ply, it's treated um, so that it doesn't sort of break down in the rain and the bad weather, it doesn't laminate. Uh, we're also going to seal it again with a varnish, mainly because I want to bring this lovely grain out, but I think it looks fantastic, and I know Amanda's going to love it. Next job for the brothers, creating the screens, which will add height and privacy to the garden. So this garden is all about textures and shapes. So what we're going to be doing to continue that theme is we're going to be making these rectangular walls, which we're going to fill with these circular sections of logs. What we're going to do 
So we're going to use two upright posts like this, nice and sturdy and being cemented into the ground. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the rebar. And the rebar, we're going to have these two little faces which are going to fasten on either side of this post. So it creates this kind of sleeve on the inside. You know, you can see we've got nice little small ones, large ones, they're all different shapes, so it's just a fact of putting them together and also being just the right size. Yeah, I could do that, could I? I'm not getting something right. right. It is just a, a massive puzzle, isn't it? It's nice that Charlie's giving us his job. I feel like to do a puzzle, you need a, a grandma and a grandpa, don't you, to be honest? <laughs> they know how to do the puzzles the best, not us. A spoke screening like this is fantastic. But pergolas, trellis and rose archways can be bought and would work equally well. Whereabouts should we put the last one? Up a little bit. Down a little bit. <laughs> with the screening finished, the boys bring a flavour of the East to the garden with a large cherry tree. Right. Do you want to knock any more blossom off? When you look back up against a kind of blue sky, it really does highlight the gorgeous blossom. Yeah. For me, a cherry tree is an essential part of an oriental garden, and it really does signify that arrival of spring. Now, the cherry tree that Charlie's chosen to put in the garden is Prunus accolade. My favourite thing about it is its growth habit. So you can have it single stem or multi stem, but it actually grows up and branches out. So it's perfect for a smaller garden. It won't get higher than six to eight metres, but it creates that lovely canopy. So positioned here, Beside the lawn and the patio, it's going to branch over and create that lovely bit of dappled shade that I think will be necessary in such a sunny garden. The tree may be in, but there's plenty of other plants to be planted. And David concentrates on dressing the beds around them. Charlie's making a pretty bold move with the gravel. So I know she loves contrast, but putting black on top of white is definitely a very bold move. But I think it's going to look great. It definitely emphasises that oriental vibe that the garden already has. And it's going to create that little bit of interest and that nice little wandering journey for the eye. The team are almost done. And with some final details, they finish. Lewis and Amanda's rather boring blank canvas has now been transformed into an exotic Malaysian-inspired garden with its stunning centerpiece moon gate. And now it's ready for its grand unveiling. Please open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah? Yeah! <laughs> wow! That's incredible! The way it all links in together is just absolutely fantastic. It is perfect. Well, I love that moon arch. It really set the garden off and it brought a little bit of the east to Hampshire. Now, here, I've got quite an exotic-looking plant. It's called Fatsia japonica. And as you can see, it has very large palmate leaves and it's got a beautiful, kind of creamy, spherical flower from September to October. So I'm just going to plant it in this little opening in the border, which is really going to show it off. And it's nice because there's already some exotic plants in this border. We've got some crossmere, we've got some red hot pokers and a yucca as well. So it's a lovely way to showcase different forms and different textures. In general, it's a hardy plant that can survive UK winters. They like partial shade and avoid planting them in the full sunshine. And it definitely gives you that exotic look. Now for an exotic garden in Northwood for Darshna and Noyan, inspired by the Mughal Empire in India. Our next exotic top of the plots garden was for Darshna and Noyan, whose desolate backyard was in a truly terrible state. I think it's that thought of not even knowing where to start with it. But the couple have grand designs for their miniature plot. 
They love the idea of a Moogle garden. They're famed for their geometric patterns and water features. So the Rich Brothers' design was careful to incorporate these elements with an impressive tiled garden with a space to relax in. Within these uh, Mughal style of courtyards, water is really important. Uh, so we've introduced every little fountain that you can see here. I think it'll just be a really gorgeous place to be. That looks amazing. First job for the landscapers is to clear the garden and mark out where the new tiles will go. The brothers' design involves two types of tile, creating clean, straight lines with intricate edging detail. These will need to be placed exactly right. 65 centimetres wide it is, so 65 out to here. The existing concrete surface might be an eyesore, but it does provide an ideal base for laying the tiles. But around the edges, however, where the flower beds are going, that concrete has to come up. Bonnie and Andy begin to construct the Moogle-inspired water feature using concrete blocks, while Scott starts laying those all-important tiles. The blue edging tiles really bring that Moogle feel, whilst the plain tiles are laid at a 45-degree angle to trick the eye and make the area feel bigger. Contrast works really well, doesn't it? It's going to look amazing when it's finished, yeah. Probably a bit fiddly laying the two together, but... It is, yeah, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Yeah. 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 The team are making great progress. I'll stand on it, and then you can just um, soar away. And now David and Harry can start work on the arches for the back wall. Originally, we did want to paint it straight onto the wall, but they actually turned out the wall's in a bit of bad condition, some of the mortar's falling out. So what we're doing is we're using marine ply, and that's going to give a lovely, clean, crisp archway. And marine ply is perfect for it, rather than normal ply, because it's much more suited and tolerable to the outdoor conditions. And as you can see, you might not be able to see it yet, but actually you've got the base of the archway here. We're just drawing the, the vertical sides of it, and at the top here is that ornamental archway style. <laughs> Right, should we stand it up? Yeah. It's going to look cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> One arch down, two to go. The Moogle-inspired water feature has been rendered, and it now has a steel trough inside it to contain the liquid. But first, it needs painting. The great thing about white is it's going to really reflect the light in the garden and make it really zing and seem bright, uh, which will really show off the light greens of the banana plants and the fatsias. And with the movement of the water, you'll get those dancing sparkles of light on the leaves. Should look glorious. While the team finish tiling and create beds, Charlie's ready to fill up the water feature. Now, the thing about water features and pumps is you have to have electric. Now, if you get an electrician in, it makes it expensive. There's a lot more preparation. But what we're doing is using a solar-powered pump. They have come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. So you've actually got a battery pack that charges up from the solar panel. And the great thing about this is, say it hasn't been really, really sunny, you can plug it inside for a couple of hours and it fully charges up. Now, what I need to do is test the pump. Now, this is the cool bit. It's a little remote control. But sorting out the plumbing seems to have sent Charlie round the bend. Calling Harry and David. Are you working out there or just drinking tea? I bet I know the answer. I can see him. Can you see my eye on my head? I can see your head and your eye. Do you like my little gadget? What is it? An old phone? It's a pump remote control. Is it? It's got four settings on it. Wow. Thumbs up. Now all I've got to do is fill this without a hose. One bucket at a time. What a joy. <laughs> I've good luck, Charlie. I think she's got at least 20 or 30 buckets to get that thing full. The brothers are painting their arches with contrasting colours to create a 3D effect giving the illusion that there's something beyond the arches themselves. That 
looks all right. <laughs> That's good timing, Charlie. <laughs> It's finally time to start bringing in the lush green foliage that is so typical of Moogle Gardens. One banana, two bananas. Yes. Three banana, four. In fact, six banana trees are placed around the courtyard. We've just started to place the banana trees. And what we're using, we're using Musa Beiju, and that's actually the hardiest banana tree that you can get. So it's going to be perfect down here in London. So if they do have a really cold winter, they will have to protect it. But the reason we've chosen them is just to really tie in with that mogul courtyard theme. They're going to provide a really tall, dappled, lush green canopy, really exotic feeling, and anyway, when the sun is beating down, they'll provide that lovely bit of shade. The team now crack on with the rest of the planting. Everyone's getting stuck in. Well, almost everyone. It's coming together nice, isn't it, team? Yeah, it's all that, all this hard graft now. <laughs> over. Hard graft, Harry, what? Yeah, you just stood there with a plant in your oh, arms. It's hard, it? it's hard plant making. <laughs> Where's that cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> and with the final few plants dug in, a quick tidy and some finishing touches, the garden is finished. Have that one there. Lovely. Beautiful, right? You can't have a, a table without any chairs, can you? Darshna and Noyon's bland backyard has been transformed into an exotic Mughal Empire inspired garden. But what will they think of it? Oh my oh. god! Wow. wow. This it looks amazing. Glorious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> oh, wow. It just looks like a different garden. Yeah, yeah. this does not yeah. look like our garden. <laughs> Those tiles were beautiful, really set the garden off. And what an amazing transformation. I mean, it was just a concrete yard, wasn't it, yeah. when we started? It was, yeah, and it wasn't very big. Um, but at least it was a blank canvas, which meant it was really fun to design. Right, from India to Japan. Do you remember my yoga zen garden in Bristol for Zoe and Johnny? Do you remember? Ah, yes. Absolutely beautiful design. If I remember rightly, it was a taste of Japan in the heart of Bristol. And I'm pretty sure we did a very cool walkway. We did. With all the bamboo. Yeah. yeah. No pandas. <laughs> <laughs> The couple wanted an exotic and calming space to practice yoga in, and Zoe wanted to grow flowers for her wedding bouquet. Charlie's incredible design won Johnny and Zoe over with its raised Zen yoga deck, boardwalk, and exotic plants. So there's a little boardwalk that takes you through all this planting. Lots of bamboos, lots of green plants, white flowers, to this deck area that's raised up over the planting, so you'll feel like you're sort of suspended over the planting, and it will envelop you so you will be screened from the neighbours. Mm -hmm. The team have their work cut out clearing the garden and constructing the Japanese-inspired yoga deck. Uh, and I need somebody to cut this up here, a bit taller than us. You're having height, you're having height problems. Do you want to go on my shoulders now? Go all the way around would be better. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh he's got him. Oh. That's it. Oh, perfect. Lee knocks up a rectangular frame for the deck and cuts the corners off to create a rough egg shape. Then he and Steve add joists to strengthen the frame, while Andy and Paul prepare a level base. With the frame in position, supports are cemented in and the boards are attached on top. While the brothers start constructing the boardwalk off the decking. <laughs> You're not meant to be laying down on the job already, mate. Oh, I mean, look at that. I've got uh, the short straw here. Oh, OK, so you're, you're on my, zig, are you? I'm on... Uh, I could, yeah, zig. It's that short straw. Zig Don't sit straws. on it, whatever you do. <laughs> no. 
With the yoga deck finished, a hole is cut in it, so Charlie can plant a tree to create a shady canopy. So the great thing about planting through the deck like this, it will make a feature plant of the tree, so it will look like a specimen planting, but it can root down into the soil beneath, so it will actually establish really well. So we just put a bit of uh, matting in here to hold the soil in place. So we got a nice hazel. You ready? Yep. Look! Oh, that's ideal. I would slightly worry it wasn't going to go in then. Next, Charlie adds further screening around the deck using some rustic timber. So now I think I'm going to start about here-ish. Yeah? Harry, does that look like it's upright, mate? Slightly away from you. Like that? Slightly to you. Away. Are you joking me? No, just me? one more. Well, a bit more. Perfect. <laughs> right, Paul, get now it's just the hazel which is wrong behind it. Cut the screws in. Watch whoa, 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 whoa. the cook cost me up. Tree planted, and Charlie now tackles the bespoke copper-piped pergola with Andy's help. So the whole idea is they're going to have four on each side, and they're literally going to go into these timbers there, like so. Get the effect. With the pipes positioned, Charlie and Andy arrange them to form an elegant arch. As the garden really takes shape, Harry can start the exotic planting. I have to say, as soon as you're up here, you have a completely different sense to the rest of the garden. It's got a very calming effect already, and that's why I'm planting Actea. I've got to say, it's one of my favourites. And it's a lovely plant because it has this simple elegance about it. It's got these vertical spires of white flowers, which really stands out in a darker space. Charlie's also planting the flowers for Zoe's wedding bouquet. We've got a nice climbing rose. I know an apricot colour is Zoe's favourite colour for a rose, and I really like this one because it's very delicate. There's something very pure about it, and I think it'll look fantastic in a bouquet, as well as the, the roses and sweet peas and the jasmine for the wedding bouquet. I thought it'd be really nice to give another evergreen. This is myrtle, and I love myrtle. And traditionally, uh, since Queen Victoria, she had it in her wedding bouquet. And ever since that, every royal that's got married, there's always been some myrtle in their wedding bouquet. So I thought that would be lovely, and I'm sure it will bring Johnny and Zoe the best of luck for their wedding next year. With some final flourishes, the team are finished. And what was an uninspiring place has been transformed into this zen yoga retreat. But will Johnny and his fiancée Zoe fall for its exotic eastern charm? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness! You have to be <laughs> yoga deck at the back of the garden will be a really lovely place for them just to chill and relax and do their exercises and by having the bamboo sort of flanking either side of the boardwalk it will sort of calm them down before they even get to the yoga area and bamboo is absolutely fantastic for creating a bit of a sensory feel you get the lovely rustle of the leaves and you get the dappled light shining through you can grow them in pots, you can grow them in the ground. Best to go for a clump forming one. But what I will say is if you want to get the best out of them, it's definitely worth clearing the stems. So taking away sort of the little fluffy bits at the bottom, which exposes the canes. And depending on which variety you're using, you can clear up to about a meter up. The one thing I'll say about bamboos in a pot, make sure you water them regularly. They're quite thirsty plants. 
and you know when they need watering because the leaves roll up. So don't let them get to that stage. If the leaves are all rolled up, you need to water it. So you can see clearing the stems like that. You've still got the screening effect of the bamboo and the lovely rustly sound, but then you've got the beauty of the canes themselves. And now for our final exotic garden, Zambia via Watford. This top of the plot's garden was for Archie and Manjula, who used to live in Zambia. They were desperate to bring some exotic African flavour to their rather normal British back garden. And the Rich Brothers' incredible design certainly did that. The main features are these slabbed areas, and these replicate that kind of cracked earth. So it's quite fragmented, quite architectural, uh, and quite modern. So these lead you through the garden, and then this is where you cross uh, this deck bridge over a natural water feature. All right. The landscaping team wastes no time clearing the garden and ripping up the turf. Nearly everything must go. Once the garden is cleared, the next job is prep work for the patio. The mark makes a start on the wall, which will divide the eating area from the rest of the garden. The groundwork's underway, and Charlie's dug the pond. So the boys are using a butyl liner. As you can see, the ground is very stony, so we're putting a good layer of soft sand down first. Then we're going to put some underfelt down to protect the liner and then the liner on top of that. The brothers' design features this distinctive angular patio intersected with irregular deep cuts. But to achieve this unique effect, they first need to lay the slabs, then cut out the shape. We've gone for the idea of having this dried soil, this kind of cracked earth look. So it's quite fragmented, quite architectural, and all the patio slabs lead off each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it back maybe about 200 mil from here and create a parallel line. That's for the next area of slabbing. And then this is going to be a lovely little run of gravel and maybe a little bit of interplanting um, just to break it up, create that step over. Um, and it just should make the space a little more interesting. Angles are everything in the brothers' design, and so with paving progressing nicely, David decides it's time for the block wall to get the same treatment. Within the design, this wall helps to divide the garden. It creates a really lovely space at the back where the sun is, they're going to have that alfresco dining, it's where most of the activity will be. So it's lovely separating that from the rest of the garden. Now what we're doing with this wall, it's not going to be the same as regular walls. It's going to have a peak, and that angular shape will link in really nicely with the patios in the garden. We built this using lightweight blocks, which makes it really easy to cut, which is the next thing I've got to do. The grinder makes short work of the block wall. Now all it needs is a bit of render. The pond is also taking shape. And with the liner down, it can be filled. This is the centerpiece of the brothers' design, with its picturesque wooden slat bridge. And the boys have to get this right for the couple to be happy. Nice. So we're just screwing down the deck and boards onto the frame now. And what we're going to do, just to get that bespoke feeling like the rest of the garden, we're going to put up a line and we're going to cut a taper into the deck board. So it's actually thinner at one end and thicker at the other. Um, and then that should just fit in with the whole shape of the garden. One of Archie and Manjula's fondest memories of their garden in Africa was the wonderful fruit trees it had. And although Watford isn't quite warm enough for growing mangoes, a luscious fig tree isn't a bad compromise. So I haven't got it right against the wall, and I've also put some wires in. With figs, if you fan them out, you get a lot more fruit on them. So we're going to sort of train this down and tie it onto that wire. This one's going to go on up, and then we'll train it onto the next wire. But the fig tree isn't the only exotic plant going into this garden. 
buddy. The boys have chosen a sumac tree, the staghorn. It's actually native to North America, but will add plenty of colour to the garden across the seasons. So why the sumacs? Do you know, well, not only for its you know, amazing autumn colour and the kind of way that the red links in with the whole garden, but you know, it's got lovely details like the kind of furriness of the stem, to, um, you know, the staghorn. Like and the antlers, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. fluffy, really tactile. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. And it kind of evokes the African feel as well, you know, this kind of large canopy. For that savanna look. Savannah, exactly. Here yeah. in Watford. <laughs> The garden is really coming together, with a variety of plants dotted around. And tying it all together is the rusty red earth gravel, which runs throughout this exotic garden. The transformation is nearly complete, and the boys can't wait to get the bridge in and see what it looks like. We put that wall there, then. I know. So let's pass this over to... Ready? Yeah, back that way, mate. Don't rest it on the wall there, boss. Like, yeah. Ready? Bring her in. Right. Yeah. All right. <sighs> yeah, got it. Got it yeah. Right, lower it down. A bit more. Draw end up. Yeah, keep going. Oh. How's that yeah, look on your end? Yeah. That's it. Looks nice. It almost looks bespoke, that bridge, oh, you know. <laughs> With the bridge in situ, there's a final flurry of activity as the team pushes to finish the garden. And what was a fairly typical British garden has been transformed into this exotic Zambian-inspired landscape. But will it get Archie and Manjula's all-important seal of approval? OK, okay I'm going to spin you round a little bit. OK. Ready and open your eyes to New Garden. Wow. What do you think? <laughs> Amazing. I've never lost for words. Italian. But I am. This is just just... incredible, you know? Wow. <laughs> incredible. Wow. This is like really we... my garden? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he going to take yeah. my weight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> the couple are thrilled. So there's just time for one more thing. Well, that's definitely made me want to go on safari. Oh, are you, you guys? paying? Are you paying? Yeah, okay. all in. All inclusive. See the big five? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. It does go to show, though, with uh, some careful consideration with your plants, you can create an exotic look. Even in old blighty. <laughs> Well, we do hope you enjoyed a look back at some of our favourite exotic gardens. And see you next time for some more Top of the Plots. Mm -hmm.